I've been experimenting with using a 3D pen on fabric, and I have to say the results have been fantastic, especially with cosplay and making costumes in mind. And one of the best parts about all this, everything I'm going to show in this video does not require any sewing, and using a 3D pen is way faster. Plus, 3D pens have loads of other uses as well. Okay, I am grounded in reality, so there are a few things you should think about. Of course, these pockets and features aren't as strong as sewn ones, but they are way stronger than I thought they would be. And for a costume that's only used a few times, that's strong enough. Even though you don't need sewing supplies, you will need flexible filaments and a 3D pen that can handle their higher temperature. These flexible filaments turn out to be the key to getting good results when using a 3D pen with fabric. I talk more about this and exactly what you will need at the end of this video. With that said, I think you'll be amazed at how fast and easily you can make functional straps, incorporate electronics, pockets, and more. Let's dive right in and look at the first of these five clever uses, making hidden pockets. This is one of the first ideas I had for using a 3D pen with fabric, and it fits what a 3D pen can do perfectly. In so many costumes, you find yourself needing a custom pocket or strap to hold that special prop. A 3D pen is perfect for creating these custom geometries inside whatever piece of clothing or costume you have. It leaves few marks on the outside and is strong enough to hold these items. And as you'll see shortly, it's super fast to make. I'm going to quickly show you how to make hidden pockets for these vials while giving you some tips and tricks. Planning out the pocket is important. Be sure to leave plenty of room for the sides so they will be strong enough. The thicker you make these sides on the perimeter, the stronger the pocket will hold onto the fabric. Using cardboard to create the basic shape of the pocket is key. When making a relatively flat pocket, you can just cut a piece of cardboard to size and then pen over it. But when you need to make a larger pocket for something rounded like this vial, simply mold a piece of cardboard to your object like this. Here I'm using some tack adhesive putty to hold the molded cardboard in place while I start adding the flexible filament using the 3D pen. If you aren't worried about how your hidden pocket will look, and remember, it's hidden, making a mesh pocket like this is fastest. Now I'm removing the cardboard and adding the bottom. And voila, you have your custom size flexible pocket. You can also use a wood burning tool to smooth the flexible filament to make pockets or straps or whatever look nicer. More about that in a little bit. Oh, I almost forgot. I also used the pen to add this crest which I bought on Etsy. On to number two, easily using buckles, straps, and ribbons. For this, your local craft store is your friend. There you can get all sorts of sewing and clothing accessories, which you can also use with a 3D pen. Just do a quick layout and then lay down some pads. And this is the wood burning tool in action, smoothing the strap out and making it look nice. So here we have a nice smooth strap, which we're going to attach to the pads we made earlier and use that to hold the wand in place. The process for a ribbon is even easier. Just lay down a pad like we did before, get the lengths of the ribbon right, and then pen right over the top of it to hold it in place. It seems too fast and easy to work well, but it's way stronger than you would think. Using a buckle with a 3D pen strap is a little bit different. I'm laying out the strap, making sure part of it can fit through the buckle, and if I make the strap too long, it's okay because I can trim it to length. Then I insert it into the buckle and lay down some more filament to lock it in place. Note that I lay the filament down in two different directions to give it more strength. Then we need to get the layout right for whatever piece of fabric we're adding our strap to. Then we just add more filament to attach it. I'm making these areas that contact the fabric pretty big so that the strap can hold the heavy hammer. And I'm also using two directions like I mentioned before. Here's the finished strap all completed. Let's now look at our third use, easily adding accessories to our costumes. While you're at the craft store, also pick up some of these because you can also use your 3D pen to add them to any costume. Just lay them out and pen around them to stick them in place. This is another alternative to gluing them in place and I bet it's stronger due to the flexibility issue you'll see at the end of the video. These hooks with functional clasps are just another example. Browsing around the craft store can give you a ton of ideas if you're willing to get creative. I hope you're seeing the power and flexibility hey, of these techniques if you aren't convinced, let's now talk about how this makes incorporating electronics into your cosplay and costumes so incredibly simple. There are a couple of aspects for this that I'll touch on with regards to 3D pens. 
The first is just mounting Arduinos, control electronics, and batteries very easily and in a secure manner. One challenge with mounting electronics is needing to take them on and off for programming or rework, as well as having access to the wires. By using a 3D pen to fix a solderless breadboard in place, that solves a lot of these issues. You could also do this for a custom designed PCB as well. Another fun idea I had was incorporating these WAGO lever nuts into the fabric to create built-in power distribution areas. These are just two examples that I had, and I think using a 3D pen with these type of electronics can open up a whole new area. I can't wait to show other ideas I've had that are related to this in future videos. Okay, say so you don't want to use complex electronics like I just showed. Well, you can also buy full solutions like this one. This is a color changing LED strip that's all wired up and ready to go right out of the box. It was about 12 bucks on Amazon. But what do you do to hold this battery pack and make it integrated to the fabric and costume? Well, we can make a nice flexible pocket to hold it. Keep in mind that we need to be able to remove the battery pack to change the batteries and be able to toggle the on off switch. I'm using the same techniques I used earlier to make the hidden pockets. Here I'm making an end stop to help hold the battery pack in place. And presto, we have a custom size integrated battery pack holder. Adding the strip itself to the t-shirt is pretty straightforward. You just need to be sure to reinforce all the endpoints pretty well. I add flexible filaments along both sides with occasional cross straps. So by using a 3D pen with pre-built electronics, you can quickly and easily add LEDs to your costume. Can you tell I'm jazzed about this? And again, this is just one simple application. I'm sure people will come up with much more once they see it. Time for use number five, being able to combine standard 3D pen techniques with fabric. This last use shows that we can combine other 3D pen techniques with fabric for some great results. This example looks similar to other 3D printing and fabric creations that have been made in the past, and I'm basically showing we can accomplish similar things with a 3D pen. I'm going to add those spikes directly onto this stretchy sleeve which I bought off Amazon. Other techniques require using a special mesh fabric so standard plastics can become embedded into the mesh fabric. Here I'm penning flexible filament directly onto the sleeve fabric, which is not mesh. I've used some blue painter's tape to lay out the pattern of the spikes, and now I'm using some red flexible filament to make attachment pads. These are all of the completed pads prior to attaching the spikes. Using a standard 3D pen technique, I'm using aluminum foil to make the shape of the spikes. Of course you can make whatever shape you want with it. Then I add blue painter's tape over the top of the foil so that the flexible filament will stick to it. Then it's time to coat the spikes with some blue flexible filament. Now that the spike is coated, I'm going to remove the aluminum foil from the inside so that the spike is more flexible and can resist ripping off. Finally, we just need to attach all the hollow spikes to the attachment pads using a little bit more filament. Another nice thing about working with fabric is that it also flexes and moves, so it's much easier to get the 3D pen angles that you need. And here it is, a top view of the finished product. So awesome. And of course I had to show it in action. I had to put it on a bunch of times for all the takes I did, and it held together fine. I keep saying this, but I think there are a lot of possibilities here, and I look forward to exploring this in the future. Time to talk about the details of what you will need to use these techniques. You'll need two basic things. The first is a 3D pen which can handle the higher temperatures needed for flexible, also called TPU filaments. Note that not all 3D pens can get to the 200 to 230 degrees C temperature range that flexible filaments require, so be sure to double check this if you buy a pen. The second is the flexible filaments themselves. I put links to what I've used and shown here in the video description. And that's it. That alone will get you started working with fabrics. Some of you may be wondering what happens if you just use plain PLA instead of flexible filament. I'm going to quickly show you and this will highlight why using flexible filaments is so key. Here I've made two circles on the same piece of fabric. The green one is plain PLA and the blue one is flexible filament. The green PLA only layer peels off very, very easily because it hardens into a single rigid layer. 
It has no give or flex, so it just peels right off. This is why people use special mesh fabrics to help retain hard plastics. The melted plastic becomes embedded in the mesh, and that's why the hard plastic won't just peel off. The flexible filament, on the other hand, has a ton of give and can resist peeling off much, much better. In other words, it flexes and remains attached, as opposed to being rigid and just peeling right off. Okay, so I've been really excited about how well a 3D pen has worked with fabrics. My wife lovingly teased me about how I was nerding out over it. I have other ideas of how to combine a 3D pen with fabric, so drop me a comment if you'd like to see more videos on this subject. Or give me a reality check if you think I'm getting hyped for nothing. But I mean, come on. These techniques are fast and easy to do with no sewing at all. You can do multiple colors and make completely custom pockets. You can quickly incorporate electronics into your costumes. Oops, there I go again. If you know someone who makes costumes or cosplay or would be interested in using electronics with fabric, please share this video with them so they can learn about these techniques. I can't wait to see what other people will do with them. Totally new to 3D pens and want to get one? Check out my 3D pen buying guide here. Or if you want to learn and improve your 3D pen skills, check out my tutorial playlist here. Finally, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more 3D pen videos from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.